In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know to remove, repair, and reinstall the inside flip-down freezer door on your two- or three-way Dometic refrigerator freezer with a single outside door like this one. We last covered this topic back in 2021. The video you're watching now has the most up-to-date information for how to make this job easier and better, including tips that some of you shared after watching our previous videos. This video applies to practically every model of Dometic two- or three-way fridge freezer with a single outside door, made over the last 40 or 50 years. It also applies to some Norcold fridge freezers. You may have a fridge freezer like this in your RV, camper, travel trailer, or as they say outside North America, your caravan, or possibly even your boat. We started down this rabbit hole when our freezer door in our camper broke a few years ago, and I followed instructions that I found here on YouTube, and I ended up breaking more than I fixed. So in this video, you are going to see how to avoid the mistakes that I made. You're going to see the tools, the parts, and the techniques to fix your freezer without causing any collateral damage, and you'll save time, frustration, and money. So, why would you have to do this job in the first place? Well, chances are, if you're watching this video, you have a freezer door that's sagging down and won't stay closed. So that means that your frozen food is thawing out because your freezer isn't cold enough, and meanwhile, down in your refrigerator compartment, things like eggs, milk, and lettuce could be freezing. You're also using way more propane and a lot faster than you need to, so instead of enjoying your camping trip, you're packing up and heading into town to buy more food and fill up your propane tank. If you have a sagging freezer door, it's probably because the closing mechanism is broken. This can break in several ways. Often, your freezer door will break just because the parts get old and brittle, but your freezer door can also break if you put too much weight on it. Another common way the freezer door gets broken is if the main door closes while the inner freezer door is still open. This usually happens during storage, when you've propped the freezer door open to let it air out, and then the outer door closes on it, either because you're moving your trailer or because you've walked by your freezer and forgot that that's what you did and you push the outer door shut. Just ask me how I know. If you'd like a way to air out your freezer during the off-season without causing this kind of freezer door damage, just check out this video right here. So now, let's take a look at how your freezer door works, the parts that are involved, and how they all fit together to make a freezer door that works properly. This step is really important, so don't skip it. Knowing how all these parts fit together will help you avoid collateral damage that could turn this into a very expensive project. For example, if you break your freezer door, that's over $150 to replace. And if you break your fridge, that could be $1,200 or more. Knowing everything that's involved will also help you order the correct parts for the repair. So first, let's talk about right and left. This is critical when you're following these instructions or ordering parts because several of the parts involved have a left hand and a right hand version. So left is going to be your left as you stand facing your open fridge and right is going to be your right as you stand facing your open fridge. If your freezer door sags open, you most likely have a problem with your spring mechanism. It's located right here, and there's one on each side of your freezer door. Let's talk about how the spring mechanism itself works, and then we'll talk about how the spring mechanism connects to the door, and finally, how the spring mechanism connects to the fridge itself. So let's talk about the spring mechanism itself. The spring mechanism is made up of three parts. There's a nylon bolt, the metal spring, and the spring housing. Now the bolt is the same on the left and right side of your fridge. There's just one part number for the bolt. But the spring housing and the spring are not the same. There is a left spring housing and a left spring and a right spring housing and a right spring. 
So don't get the sides mixed up because your freezer door won't work right and you could probably break something if you get them mixed up. If you're watching this video because your freezer door sags open, chances are that one or both of your spring housings have broken. They usually break along a jagged line somewhere through the arm of the spring housing or somewhere through the barrel of the spring housing. This is because there is twisting force or torque that this part is exposed to and eventually it breaks when the plastic part gets overloaded or it just gets brittle with age. So this next part is a bit shocking, but don't worry because we've got this. If you need to replace either of these parts, you are in for a surprise because this repair can be expensive. Like I said, the spring housing is usually what breaks, and if you can find the Dometic OEM replacement, they're going to cost you $25 or more each. That's $50 for the pair. In fact, back in 2021, when our Dometic freezer door broke, we paid over $50 for just these two parts. And I was really shocked and disappointed because not only was that a lot of money, but the replacement parts that I got, these ones here, looked even flimsier than the originals that were installed in my 2007 vintage RV. But we didn't get mad, we got creative. What we did is we re-engineered these parts. We basically beefed up the material in every dimension that we could get away with. And we used the most stress and temperature resilient plastic that we could find. As a matter of fact, I boiled this one in water to show that it could still be used. And I even ran over this one with the Jeep. But we didn't stop there. In 2023, thanks to your support, we upgraded our manufacturing process. So whether you have an original generation iFixify spring housing or our next generation version, we are so confident that you will be satisfied with these products that if you ever have a concern, just contact us on our website, ifixify.co, and we will take care of things. You can get these better, stronger, iFixify versions on Amazon or eBay, and you can get them for less than half of what the OEM parts cost. I put links in the description below for both the OEM and iFixify versions of these parts. We've stocked our parts at Amazon warehouses across the United States and Canada. So it's your choice. If you order from Amazon, you'll often get free overnight or next day delivery. And if you're not an Amazon shopper, eBay can be a good choice. If you live outside the United States or Canada, eBay now lets us ship these parts internationally by sending them to an eBay mail forwarding center in the United States. Also, be aware that in the last couple of years, we've seen some copycats, people selling poorly made knockoffs on eBay and Amazon. So take a close look and make sure that you're getting the real deal. Okay, so that's the spring housings. Now, another way that your freezer door can wear out or break is if you have a problem with the bolt or the spring. These uh, definitely do get old and wear out with age. Uh, I've seen the springs rust. I think those are knockoff springs. Um, I've also seen them break, and the bolt can shear off um, or break if it's overstressed or overloaded. The problem is that, as far as I know, these parts are no longer manufactured by the OEM. So if you find these, if you can find them on the internet, they are often uh, secondhand um, or sometimes old stock uh, or they're knockoffs. Like they, they make the, the springs out of rusting metal um, and, and that doesn't work very well. Um, if you can find them, a spring can cost 20 or $30 and likewise for the bolt, um, 20 or $30. So what have we done? Well, as you would expect, we have re-engineered these parts and manufacture them in the United States. We have a left-hand spring uh, coated in blue for the left-hand side of your fridge and a uh, right-hand spring coated in yellow for the right-hand side of your fridge. As you can see, these are made out of um, stainless steel. They are highly resilient. Uh, they are currently available through ifixify.co. Um, we also have them on Amazon and on eBay. And we're working on the bolt. It's currently in beta testing. So by the end of this summer, you should 
be able to order all of the parts that you need to fix the interior flip down freezer door on your Dometic single door refrigerator freezer using all parts from iFixify. Again, links are below in the description. Okay, so before you assemble your parts, now's a good time to double check that you have the left spring going into the left spring housing and the right spring going into the right spring housing. If you have OEM springs, there might be a little bit of blue paint on the left one, and there can be some yellow paint on the right side. But if you can't tell the difference, just give me a thumbs up. What I mean by that, if I can show you here, is if you look, that right spring has a little thumb that points up. And if the spring curls around in the direction of my fingers, like that, you have the right side spring. And likewise, left thumbs up and the left spring. If the spring curls around in that direction, you have a left hand spring. If you have iFixify spring housings, you can see that they're clearly labeled left and right. And again, remember that the left side of the fridge is your left as you're looking into your open fridge and the right side of your fridge is your right. If you got OEM or cheap knockoff versions of these spring housings and they don't tell you which side each belong on, the way to tell is which side the peg of the spring housing is in relation to this oval slot. If the peg is to the left of the slot with the spring housing in this position, it's the left side. And if the peg is to the right side of that oval slot, it's the right side. But like I said, on the iFixify parts, they're clearly labeled so that you can tell. To assemble these parts, all you have to do is insert the spring and bolt into the spring housing so that the thumb of that spring pokes through the slot on the barrel of the spring housing. And that's that one assembled. Similarly on the right, simply insert the thumb of the spring so that the thumb pokes out the slot and the barrel, and that's the right one assembled. So now that we have the spring assembly assembled, let's take a look at how it works with the wall of your fridge and with your freezer door to help you achieve a freezer door that closes itself and doesn't sag open. The hinge of your freezer door has a female plus sign indentation that engages with the male plus sign on the bolt of your spring assembly. When you first install the door, and I'm going to point this out several times, you need to install the door in such a way that the arm of the spring assembly is at about a 90 degree angle to the door. Then one of the final steps of the assembly will be to pivot the arm so that it's in line with the door and that winds the spring which closes your door by itself. Dometic actually makes two very similar versions of this freezer door. The older version has a molded in what's called hinge plate as you see here. Now this hinge plate or hinge is very prone to breaking. When your freezer door gets old enough this almost turns to a chalk-like consistency and can just disintegrate. I will post another video right up there um, showing how you can actually modify or retrofit an older door like this with a hinge plate uh, and save hundreds of dollars uh, over getting a new door, uh, which are very hard to find. The newer version of the door has more like what's shown in this configuration. It has a hinge or hinge plate that is screwed onto the door. Uh, in this case, if you have a door like this, and you can see if you just sort of peek up underneath your freezer door, the easiest way to remove your freezer door can be to just unscrew these two screws, loosening the hinge plate, and your freezer door will come right out. While we're looking at the hinge or hinge plate, I wanted to point out this small feature here. It's a small hole in the center of the hinge plate that's just big enough for a small tool like this 2.5 millimeter Allen key. If you put this Allen key into the hole from the other side, you can actually use this technique to remove the door.
So now I'd like to focus our attention to this area of your fridge wall near your freezer. And what you will see is that there is a large round hole and a smaller oval slot. Now, the round hole will accommodate the barrel of the spring housing. And in its final position, the slot will accommodate the small peg on the arm of the spring assembly. But when you first install the spring assembly, you're going to install it so that the arm of the spring assembly is horizontal, pointing out of your fridge. The reason for this is that in the final step of the assembly, you will need to wind the spring. And the way you will wind the spring is when you install your freezer door, and I'm going to use this as a mock-up of your freezer door um, with either a molded in or screwed on hinge, you're going to make sure that the freezer door is at a 90 degree angle to the arm of the spring housing when it locks in, like that. Then, at the very final step, you're going to rotate the arm of the spring housing until the peg on the arm engages with the wall of the fridge, and that puts tension on the spring to keep your freezer door closed. So now that you understand the theory of how your freezer door should work, to stay closed. Let's talk about the tools that you'll need to do this job safely and easily. Eye protection is important. I prefer safety glasses like this one. They have built-in readers, and I'm just saying, but built-in readers really help eyes of a certain age with details involved in a project like this. Another thing you might want to think about are work gloves. There is a chance for sharp edges or broken plastic parts, and work gloves can save your hands. Another useful tool is a headlamp like this one. We're dealing with a fridge with no internal lighting, and the space is really cramped, so there may not be room for a helper to hold a flashlight or for a work lamp. When it comes to actually removing the freezer door, the secret sauce is still this air shim, as we've shown in our previous videos. This is a really tough bladder that you fill with air using a squeeze bulb, and this will help us remove the freezer door without causing collateral damage. Another tool that I use to remove the freezer door is a medium to large size flat bladed screwdriver. Now, a customer and viewer pointed out that you can also use a Allen key or similar tool as long as it's small enough to fit in the little hole in the freezer door hinge. If you place the Allen key in the freezer door hinge like this and use enough pressure, you can dislodge the bolt of the spring assembly from the freezer door hinge and release the freezer door. I find that this takes a lot of finger pressure, um, but if it works for you, go for it. When it comes to placing the door back, if, like me, you don't have a lot of finger power, a tool like this can be really useful. Um, a spatula, you can also use a one inch putty knife, and I'll show you how to use that later on. Now, of course, there are links to all of these items in the description below if you don't have any of them or if you want to do some one-stop shopping. Okay, so now that we have the parts and the tools, let's get started with how to do the repair. The very first thing is I want you to turn off your fridge and let it get to room temperature. This will give older plastic parts the chance to get flexible and it will reduce the chance that things break. So fridge off, let it come to room temperature. The next step is to give yourself enough room to work. You need to be able to open your refrigerator door all the way, way past 90 degrees. So if you're in a small trailer like mine, move stuff out of the way or get rid of it so that you can get that fridge door way open. At the same time, take out the fridge door shelves to give yourself enough room to work and so that you don't break the shelves. The next step is I'd like you to take the air shim and insert it between the wall of your fridge and your freezer door like this. And then, I'd like you to close the freezer door. Then, I want you to inflate the air shim. So I want you to inflate the air shim gently but slowly. What's going to happen is a gap will open up between your freezer door and the wall of your fridge, and it will expose the nylon head of the bolt of the spring assembly right there. When you've inflated the air shim just a bit, you now have a gap that you can use 
to insert a flat bladed screwdriver and press the head of the bolt into the wall of the fridge to disengage it from the hinge of your freezer door. So all you have to do is just press or twist and push that bolt in at the same time that you gently pull on the uh, lower right hand corner of your freezer door to disengage that bolt, just like this. Another option is you can take the Allen key and place it through the hole of the hinge to push the bolt into the wall of the fridge. Because you don't have leverage, that actually takes a, quite a bit of finger force and it's not for everyone, but it is a technique that you can use. So again, with a flat bladed screwdriver, just push the head of that bolt into the wall of the fridge and disengage the bolt from the hinge of your freezer door at the same time that you just gently pull the freezer door outward like that and disengage it. This is probably a really good time to take a very close look at the anatomy of that nylon bolt. I've taken the spring off so that it's much more clear. But this bolt is what you see peeking at you between the wall of the fridge and the freezer door. It's part of the hinge assembly. When you insert the screwdriver to push the bolt into the wall of the fridge in that direction, the first time you do it, you're probably pressing against this disc here. Now, as you do that, the bolt is likely to move in, and then you're going to take your screwdriver and, if needed, press against the second ring to fully release the bolt from the hinge of the freezer door. Once it's disengaged, you can deflate the air shim and the door will come off. Once it's disengaged, all you have to do is pivot the lower right corner of the freezer door outward and the door will just come out, leaving you with that. To replace your freezer door, first make sure that you have the left spring assembly for the left side and insert it in that direction. The right assembly on the right side placed with the arm of the spring housing horizontal in that direction. Once again, you want the arm of the spring housing horizontal on both sides. To replace your freezer door, place your freezer door at roughly a 90 degree angle to the arm of the spring assembly. You're going to start on the left hand side and you're going to make sure that the bolt engages with the hinge on the freezer door and then you're going to push the freezer door into the left wall of the fridge. Again, do this firmly but gently. So now that the left side of your freezer door is engaged with the bolt on the spring assembly, you're going to do the same thing with the right side. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, one is you can depress the bolt head into the wall of the fridge using finger pressure. But if your fingers aren't strong enough, another thing you can do is place your putty knife or your spatula over the bolt head like this, and then slide the right corner the hinge of the freezer door over the spatula to depress the bolt head. So let's do that now. I'm going to take the spatula, place it over the bolt head, and then slide the door of the fridge in that direction, which will depress the spring housing and the bolt head as I do it. Now this takes a bit of force but be slow and gentle. And when you have it in place, very carefully remove the spatula and you'll hear it pop into place. The other way you can do this is by depressing this bolt in with your fingers. If you have enough power, as you move the door over and slide it into position. When you do that, you're gonna hear the same sort of pop of engagement, and then that bolt is in place like that. So once again, now what you have is you have your freezer door 
mounted with the arms of the spring assemblies pointed horizontally. So the last step that we're going to do, finally, is we're going to take either our fingers or the flat bladed screwdriver and rotate the arm of the spring assembly until it engages with that hole in your fridge. And when it does, you'll hear a little pop. We will do the same on this side of the freezer. And now, if you've followed all of these steps correctly, what you have is a freezer door that opens easily and shuts with a beautiful, satisfying smack. If this video helped you fix your Dometic interior freezer door, you know what to do. Also, check out this helpful iFixify video. And don't forget, there's a link in the description below for all of the things that you'll need to do this repair on your own. Thanks for watching and happy camping.